Yo, what's going on y'all in today's video? I got the birthday special for y'all, you know what I'm saying? Just turned 18 and whatnot, but anyway, you know, I got the how to make a blade ball. I think blade ball was a really popular game and stuff because someone suggested this to me like probably like a month and a half ago. Then I searched it up. I was like, oh, I ain't even heard of this game and stuff. I played it. Cool game, very simple concept and stuff. This is the part one. I'm just introducing the general concept. I'm not literally showing you how to make the entire game. This that's why this is part one. If you guys mess with the content, I got y'all with part two why I work on the blocking. This is simply just how to make a ball that follows around players. When it reaches the player within a certain ra radius, it will kill the player and then it'll move to the next player. So yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and straight to the video. Oh, actually, what's up to everyone who's watching the premiere? This is not live. And stuff. I know people, a lot of people will be asking me that. This is not live, pre-recorded video. Anyway, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. <clears throat> okay, so first things first, of course, we're going to need a ball, right? Pause, but. We're gonna head on head on over to the part up here. Let's click it. Let's click spear, right? Scrolling. You don't really gotta change the size, you can really just leave it as size it is. Um so for material, let's change it to neon, change the uh, actually no, you could leave it. It's crazy how like this is brick this is I mean this is medium stone gray. Yeah, like it looks white. Like they don't even look that different. Yeah, like this just looks brighter. That's the only difference. <laughs> but I mean we could change it to to institutional white but anyway so you want to do that right <clears throat> you want to turn off can collide make sure can touch is enabled right you want to anchor it because you're going to be tweeting it um and then you want to name it ball right so ball and then boom that's all you gotta do and then you want to leave it inside of the workspace right then i'm going to insert a um remote event and replicate a storage you guys, you guys already know we're gonna need to communicate between the server and the client so let's insert a remote event and replicate a storage to so click the plus icon let's type remote event if you don't see it boom remote event then we're going to rename remote event to ball event then we're going to open up starter player then in starter player scripts i'm going to insert a local script so plus icon local script and then i'm going to name said local script ball script and in parentheses put local right then i'm going to delete print hello world and we're going to need to make just one variable <coughs> We're just going to need to get the ball remote event. So let's say local ball event is equal to game, the replicate storage, wait for child, ball event, right? Then I'm going to create the function, the on client. So ball event dot on client event connect function. In parentheses, you're going to put event type, right? Then enter. Then you're going to say, we're, let's first make a variable for the ball, just we're going to need it for both events. So let's say local ball is equal to workspace find first child ball right now if you're worried at all about like i mean if you're worried i guess if like of a player's name ball even though there's only one player named ball um you could name the ball like something more specific like you know like ball some numbers or something you know you know but it doesn't really matter all that much anyway let's say if event type is equal to rotation marks chased this means the players you know they're, they're the target they're being chased instead of you know how when you're playing mid blade ball um you know the ball is coming towards you because it's red so that's what we're gonna do so we're gonna say ball dot brick color is equal to brick color dot new really red then i'm gonna, use, I'm gonna put an else if so i'm say else if event type is equal to quotation marks and i'm gonna say reset which pretty much means just resetting the color back to back to the default right so you can say ball dot brick color is equal to brick color dot new um institutional white that's what right? or whatever color you guys chose institutional white and just like that guys we're done with the local script let's go ahead and move on to the server script let me just okay we're good so let's close that script out insert a server script into server script service then let's go ahead and name this script ball script and in parentheses server and i'm going to delete print hello world and then i'm going to make three variables first i'm going to get the twin service i'm going to say local ts is equal to game get service Wayne service right then i'm going to get the ball and what events so ball event is equal to game that replicated storage wait for child ball event and lastly i'm going to create a variable for chasing players so local chasing sorry chasing player is going to be a boolean so set its value equal to false by default this is how we know it's the um the ball is currently chasing a player we're going to use this you're going to see how this plays into the while loop and the function so we just need one function and one while loop so first things first let's set up the function we're going to say function oh sorry we're going to say function locate my name is locate target it i mean it does the locating and the you know like literally goes after them but yeah so <clears throat> i'm going to say look uh function locate target parentheses close parentheses then enter 
and then you're going to use the for loop for i comma v in pairs workspace get children right and then enter you're going to say if v find first child humanoid and and the uh, pound sign right or number sign game dot players get children is greater than zero or you could say greater than or equal to one right enter and then you're going to create a variable for the players so you're going to say local players is equal to game dot players you could do get players or get children whichever works then you can say local random player is equal to players regular brackets math dot random one comma number of players so number sign players right then on to the next thing you're going to put a space right and then we're going to create a variable for the target character this is you know like who the ball is going to be chasing so local target character is simply equal to random player that character right and then i'm going to set the chasing player uh variable equal to true or its value equal to true right and then i'm going to fire their motive i'm going to say ball event fire client oh actually hold on sorry not fire client not yet fire all clients and then we're going to say reset so everyone's thing is reset then i'm going to say ball event fire client i'm going to fire this to the specific client so random player then chase so that they know they're being chased like the ball is coming after them right then i'm going to set up the while loop. i'm going to say while chasing player is equal to true this this means the code will only work while it's currently chasing a player which means it has an active target and target character and target character which means that there is a character just to ensure that so then we're going to create honestly a lot of variables because we're, we're using um well we're not using ray casting but we're using some of the steps to accomplish to successfully ray cast and stuff to set up the tween so first things first of course i'm going to create a variable for the ball local ball is equal to workspace my first child ball oh sorry ball right then i'm going to get the start position local start position is equal to of course ball dot position local end position as you might have guessed is um target character dot humanoid root part dot position right then i'm gonna set up the duration local duration is equal to end position minus start position on the outside you're gonna set dot magnitude Divided by thirty. You can mess around with this number. Just want to let y'all know. You can make the you can make the tween like go faster, which means the ball chases the player faster or chases it slower. Mess around, play around with the numbers. Do whatever you want with that and stuff, right? And then I'm gonna set up the tween. Local chase tween is equal to ts create for the instance put ball comma tween info dot new for the time put the duration variable. Then I'm gonna say enum. Oh, sorry. So I'm going to say enum.easing style linear. I just went linear. I mean, you guys could go with ball. I guess that would make sense. Wait, you know, I'm pretty sure there's one called, oh no, sorry, bounce. Yeah, you guys could go with that one, but I didn't really like it when I tried to, when I was testing it, but yeah. Anyway, then enum.easing direction out, right? Then I'm going to put a parentheses between the, um. I mean, sorry, I'm going to put a comma between the parentheses. And then I'm going to create a table, so special brackets, and then I'm going to say position is equal to end position then of course i'm going to play the tween chase tween play and then i'm going to set up one last thing so that will actually just two more things set up but this is the last thing for the while loop so i'm separate if statement now here's the problem i encountered right if you leave this alone the player can outrun the ball depending on how fast it is it is the player should can generally outrun it like the only way they wouldn't be able to outrun it if you left it like this is if you made the speed like you made the ball too fast but then again you can but then if you did like that there would be no fun playing the game because then you would like the ball would just be too fast so you can't really do anything all right so what i did which i'm pretty sure blade ball does i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure they did this i, I made it if statement right if the player is within a certain radius like they're close very close to the ball and like they're the one being targeted they're gonna die so we're gonna say if parentheses end position minus start position right similar to what we did up there i'm gonna say dot magnitude is less than equal to three you can mess around the number to your liking right then i'm gonna say target character that humanoid that health is of course equal to zero then i'm going to say chasing player is equal to false so that we can you know we can restart the whole thing if i set equal to false the loop will stop and then i'm going to set up a while loop down here and you're going to see how it plays into it to how it's going to reset the locate target function so let's go down here let's create a while loop we're going to say while chasing player 
is equal to false, right? Do locate target. We're gonna play the function. So locate target, boom. And then task that way 0 0.1 seconds, of course, right? So once we play the locate target function, right? Once we call it, it's going to set chasing player equal to true. As long as like you know we meet we meet all the requirements, which means this loop will stop since chasing player equal to true, right? That's how it works. Let's go ahead and test. As always, if you guys want access to any of my scripts or models, you guys can become either a channel member or a Discord subscriber. Links to either one of those options can be found in the description. Thank you to all my channel members and Discord subscribers, and just generally all the love and support I've been showing. Really do appreciate it. We're getting close to 4,000 subs. So, okay, so with the testing with this, I'm going to spawn myself a little far away. I just don't want to spawn, and it literally just spawn killing me. So, you guys should see the ball is going to turn red when I spawn in the game. Um, When I eventually spawn in the game. Spawn in the game. I'm not so sure if I'm going to spawn in the game. Okay, let's press stop, and then let's try this again. I hate when Studio be doing this. Wait. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, I feel like... Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I thought, I thought it was like that. Mmm... Oh, 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 sorry guys, I forgot. I completely forgot. Go after the if statement, the space in between. Pass that. Wait, zero point one seconds. I forgot. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, you definitely want to make sure you have that. Don't want the game crashing. There we go. Okay, you guys see the ball is red. It's chasing me, right? And then you guys see, yeah, when it gets, it gets, and obviously has to get like really close to me. Like you see, wait for it. Yeah, boom. Yeah, like it's within the range. You guys could change the number, but yeah, like, like. Pretty much to dem like, well, I can't really demonstrate it now. But pretty much what was happening was if I like just kept jumping backwards in like the same direction, like if I just jumped backwards in, in like a the same direction, like if, as if I was walking backwards while jumping, like I literally couldn't die. Like the ball just couldn't keep up with me and stuff. That's why I added this, and this is why I didn't test it as spawn because it's spawn killing. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all the birthday wishes. Really do appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Appreciate y'all for watching.